just arrived in Tel Aviv. Uh, we're here on the beach. It's really nice. It's deceptively nice because 20 miles that way is the West Bank, which Israel has been occupying since 1967. And the reason we're interested in the West Bank is because the other thing that Israel has been doing there is building settlements. So we're going to head over there and find out what that's like. Israel conquered the West Bank in East Jerusalem in 1967, after three Arab nations battled the newly minted Jewish state in the Six Days War. Israel was only 20 years old at the time and its victory was hailed as a David versus Goliath triumph. A lot of waters passed under the bridge since then, and what was supposed to have been a temporary occupation of the Palestinian territories has turned into four and a half decades of misery for the Arab residents in the West Bank. Aside from the fact that the West Bank is crisscrossed with barbed wire, walls, and military checkpoints, over 300,000 Israelis have taken it upon themselves to settle what was supposed to be the future Palestinian state. According to international law, the settlements are totally illegal. They represent a colonization of the lands that are slated for handover to the Palestinians under an agreement that both Israel and the Palestinians signed in 1993. As a result, the peace process has ground to a halt, and the much lauded two-state solution is looking less likely than ever before. I wanted to find out who the settlers were and what motivated them to pick up sticks and move across the green line to become the most notorious squatters the world has ever known. But first, I decided to get some counter-terrorism training in a West Bank gun range with a member of Israel's special forces. Buddy! Just in case. We're in a firing range in a settlement in the West Bank, and these guys behind me are civilians training to do border security. And they've got some pretty mean looking guns. Is this a safe gun? Yes. No such thing as a safe gun. Guns are made for killing. You standing at the entrance to the synagogue. Inside, there's a terror attack happening. Okay, I want you to imagine. You standing in ready position, pointing your weapon inside the synagogue, trying to take care of the terrorists. Remember how we define counter-terrorism? as combat in a civilian area. We don't want to hurt civilians. <laughs> we have to protect them, correct? This is not uh, um, Xbox, it's not games. We don't push a reset button and then you get a new life. There's real bullets outside. There's a real possibility that I'll never see my kids again. Simon scared of me. <laughs> no shit. I was starting to think this guy's job was just to scare the crap out of anyone who showed up for the training. Go! Buddy! Turns out, I wasn't the only one who thought it'd be a good idea to get some training. A Canadian woman we nicknamed Sarah Connor had brought her whole family along for the fear fest. Doesn't hurt to know how to use an AK though, right? <laughs> And for what it's worth, her daughter turned out to be a pretty good marksman. Well, I hit it twice. Didn't do as good as the 10-year-old uh, girl. Not bad. <laughs> do you think it's important for everybody who moves to Israel to have this kind of counter-terrorism training? Look, counter-terrorism training, I don't think it's important for everyone unless you're a counter-terrorist. Yeah. But to have an awareness uh -huh. of terrorism... So why do so many people carry around guns? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe to feel, uh, to feel safe. Huh? I think people think, you know, if I've got a gun at home and I wake up and there's a terrorist, I could take care of my family. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what's going through their mind. I discovered that it was easy for a settler to get a gun license in the West Bank. All they had to do was qualify at a shooting range like this one. But Palestinians living in the same area are never packing because Israel doesn't allow it. It turned out our trainer Steve was himself a settler who'd moved into the West Bank from South Africa. When we arrived at his settlement, I was surprised to see it look more like an American suburb than an outpost in a hostile territory. The community that you live in uh, was built in the particular place that it was built because of the historic significance of the place? Yeah, mo most of the little areas here that actually found signs of you know ancient Jewish settlement there, we feel that it's like reviving the past kind of thing. Right. So you're saying your settlement is right on the right here and some fields that are used by Palestinians are the left. Are there any sort of confrontations between the people working in these fields and uh, people from your settlement? 
Not often. Um, occasionally, I, I've been called in to um, what we call it's called a khadira. That's an infiltration. Mm -hmm. um, I've caught um, on a few occasions Arabs that have infiltrated the, the settlement. They've come to steal. In my mind, also, I think it's a quite a clever way for them to gather information, see how quickly we react. They're taking all this information in, so we've got to be really alert. Do you ever worry about your kids that they could get hurt? I think every parent worries about their kids, man. <laughs> but do you ever question your decision to bring no, them out here no, in no. such close proximity to no, 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 people who no, aren't very happy with your no, presence? No, I mean, like, I'll tell you... Uh, it's, it's not something you think about. It's not something I think about. It turns out the Israeli state has given his settlement, and many others like it, its full backing. But like most settlements, it hadn't started out this way. It was once an encampment that was considered illegal, even by Israel. But over the years, the settlers have learned that if they squat a site in the West Bank long enough, Israel will give them its approval, its infrastructure, and its security. You don't feel that coming here would provoke your Arab neighbors, though, into violence? I don't see why it should. Look, again, what I'm saying is, is that I don't think it's right taking other people's land. I don't think it's right for me to, you know, these guys are working hard, they've been working these fields now for maybe two generations, yeah. but you should just know that's maximum. When we're talking about Palestinian people, we're maximum talking about maybe one and a half to two generations. Yeah. The Jewish people have been here for, for 5,000 years. This dates back another, if you look on there, I think it's 3,000 years ago this, that this was active and used. We're not just a, a fabrication that this is, oh, we want this place, you know. I understand that they were here for whatever reasons, we were exiled out of Israel, but uh, you know, we, we were given the opportunity to come back. Now this was an incredible fabrication on Steve's part. The notion that the Palestinians had only lived on this land for two generations was totally false. But the idea that Jews had a historic claim to the West Bank's territories that trumped any Palestinian claims was one I'd hear over and over in the next few days and turned out to be a major part of the settler ideology that ran directly counter to the two-state solution plan. Steve was an interesting guy. Our shooting instructor is also a settler, and somehow he made being a commando in the West Bank seem almost normal. But the settlement he's from is really established, and we want to find places that are newer, where people are literally on an encampment at the top of a hill and starting a, a brand new settlement. But they're on the wrong side of the green line for doing archaeological digs. This land, it's for the Jewish people from all the world, okay? Are you recording? I don't know. I don't know. No picture to me. <laughs>